And um, good morning, everyone. Nice to have you all here. Kind of a special day today, besides the 68 degree weather. Today, we're going to celebrate Kansas's 155th birthday. So, I want to shout out for Kansas Day. Happy birthday to Kansas. On January 29th, 1861, Kansas became the 34th state of the Union. So, Congratulations to all of us Kansans today. I want to visit a little bit about our state of the city. We're going to do something a little bit different this year. I know in the past some of you have been used to uh, a little bit of a grander state of the city where we invite a lot of dignitary and um, we're, we're changing that this year. We're not going to do a live state of the city. We're going to videotape a state of the city and send that out to several of the um, both social media, um, traditional media, and, and just try a little bit different approach this year for getting our message out for state of the city. The reality is there's a lot of folks sitting at home that can't make it up here for a state of the city and at the end of the day, we want to address Wichita's future, our concerns, the citizens' concerns in a broader way. And we think that that will be something that might be appealing. And so we're going to release that in February and, uh, and, and see how that goes. And so it's um, just something new that we're trying this year. Obviously, the big news and the reason why many of you are here today, not to listen to me, but we are going to introduce a couple of friends that are now part of our um, city of Wichita community, and we're pretty excited to have both of them here today. To my left is John Hall and Gordon Ramsey. John Hall, the housing director, and obviously Chief of Police Gordon Ramsey. We're excited to have both of these folks. We'll start with Mr. Hall. John Hall is the new Director of Housing and Community Services, a department that provides housing and related social services to residents who are eligible for assistance under federal guidelines. Hall has 15 years of experience in housing and community services with governmental organizations where he has effectively used resources to produce 1,400 units of housing, develop commercial real estate, and revitalize low to moderate income census tracts. He comes to us from the nation's capital, where he served as deputy director of the Office of Asset Management and Portfolio Oversight for the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, as we know as HUD, providing program administration for federally insured and assisted projects. And at this point, I'll turn the podium over to Mr. Hall and let him share some comments and uh, it might be appropriate at that point we'll just go ahead and take questions for him and then i'll introduce our new police chief mr hall right. good to have you thank you mayor longwell and i want to also thank uh, city manager layton as well as all city council members uh, city employees and my fellow neighbors uh, i arrived in town a week ago and I must say that I have been uh, met with such warm and uh, genuine hearts across the city and so I just feel that I belong here uh, and I thank you for your hearty welcome from my banker to my insurance agent and to my co-workers I, I have just felt the love uh, and so I am here today uh, grateful for the privilege to lead and to provide stewardship uh, for the, the Housing and Community uh, Services Department. I look forward to working with all city departments in order to optimize our production and yield for the city of Wichita. I must say, um, when I told my colleagues across the nation that I was leaving HUD, uh, the federal government, to go to local government, a lot of people questioned, you know, why would you leave federal government? And I simply told them that it was because of my passion to be closer to where the action is. Uh, and so I am really energized to be here and returning back to local government to make positive impact in the neighborhoods throughout the city. And I look forward to problem solving with you and addressing the executive dilemmas of the day. Also, when I got those congratulatory remarks across the country, um, some of my colleagues 
they didn't know each other, but they all made a remark of the same thing, and I want to share it with you. They, in addition to telling me congratulations, they sent a message. They said to tell Dorothy and Toto hello. And I want you to know that I responded pretty quickly, and I said, they said to tell you there is no place like home. And so I thank you for adopting me into the family, and I am at home. Thank you. Absolutely. Did you have any questions for Mr. Hall? Nope. All right. All right. Thank you. Save them for the end. That's okay. I have to go check my phone and see the snide remarks some of you left me already. <clears throat> I won't call any names. Gordon Ramsay started his tenure as our Wichita Chief of Police this week, and we greeted him when, with some of the best Kansas weather. Ramsey has been the chief in Duluth since 2006. He's been a police officer there for 22 years. He has extensive experience in community policing. He has worked with diverse groups, including NAACP, American Indian Commission, Native Alliance, an African American men's group to create Duluth's first police civilian review board. Under Ramsey's leadership, Duluth has received high marks from residents. In recent surveys, as well as recognition from International Association of Chief of Police, IACP, in 2012 and 2013 for community policing efforts. He is past president of the Minnesota Chief of Police Association and immediate past general chair of the Midsize Agency section of IACP. He has a master's degree in management from the College of St. Scholastica in 2004 and a bachelor's degree in criminology and sociology from the University of Minnesota Duluth in 1994. He graduated from the FBI National Academy in 2005 and we are thrilled to have Chief Ramsey directing our police department here in Wichita, Kansas. And so help me welcome Chief Gordon Ramsey. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thanks for that nice introduction. I'd like to thank the mayor and uh, city manager as well as the uh, city councilors uh, for your support. Very excited to be here, and uh, I am honored. Also, um, my colleague uh, John Hall here, I want to let you know that uh, HRA back in uh, Minnesota paid for some police officers too, so maybe we can talk about that a little later. Uh, uh, so the weather is something. You know, back in Minnesota, we talk about the weather a lot. As a matter of fact, uh, I was talking to someone the other day, and they didn't know that I was the new chief, and they say, oh, so you, do you work in you know, meteorology or something? I'm like, no, I'm from Minnesota. That's what we talk about up there. Um, so it is an honor to be here. I am very excited to get started. There are uh, tremendous opportunities here, um, a lot of uh, opportunities to continue to build off the wonderful success of the Wichita Police Department. Uh, the communities here are very engaged. Uh, a lot of people have reached out to me, and I've had a lot of conversations on uh, things that uh, community members and police officers would like to see. Uh, you know, really my first 30 days, 60 days, a lot of listening. I'm going to be doing a lot of listening and meeting with people both internally and externally and really focus on building a plan for the future, future a strategic plan. So um, I'm excited to be here, and, and I'll take a few questions if, if there are some. Well, you know, fortunately, I, I come in with a study that was done through Wichita State uh, University on, on the, where the police department's at, and really that's a blueprint for the future. It identifies uh, um, areas that uh, can be looked at and, and opportunities that exist out there. So to me, that's really going to be kind of a guiding principle, as well as, you know, when I meet with uh, citizens and, and police department members to start building that list of, you know, what direction are we going to go, where are the opportunities. Uh, so... You know, there's a good base right now to start working on. You said you were going to be doing a lot of listening, but in this next month, two months, can we expect anything that you've already seen that you'd like to jump on top of? 
Well, you know, I think when you look at the, the opportunities with technology, um, we will be building on, um, you know, we're going to initiate a request for proposals for the analytics to help us, you know, put data together to help formulate our response and where we place officers and where are the areas that really we should be focusing on. So, uh, which also has a public component of crime mapping where public can access that. And so that, that's one right off the bat we're going to work on. Yeah. The analytics is very important to me, helping me understand where the crime are, giving the tools to the staff, um, helping put all that together so we can be more effective and efficient. What about body cameras? I know you, you worked with them up there. Correct. Can you talk a little bit about the importance of having them and, and why you think it's maybe important to have them here and give this project full build? Certainly. Uh, I, I'm a big proponent of body cameras, and uh, we were one of the first mid-sized cities back in Minnesota in the country to, in, to implement them. And uh, initially, the staff were about 50-50 on whether or not they were supportive or, or not. And within a few months, you know, definitely six months within the first year, 90-plus uh, percent of the officers uh, were very supportive. And uh, it began to expand into other areas of the department, including uh, school resource officers and, and detectives were requesting them. Uh, so uh, not only am I a supporter, but also the police officers see that. And obviously, the community is a big uh, supporter of the cameras as well. So, uh, you know, we're hung up here at, at waiting for uh, Department of Justice to release the funds before things can be fully implemented. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the calls I have on my list to make today is, you know, what can we do to expedite that money so we can keep this uh, progressing? Well, yeah, the, uh, that's the issue that, you know, everybody's grappling with. Um, you know, uh, what's public right now when, when cases are closed um, and it's not inside someone's home, um, someone, you know, I mean, there's so many variables with body cameras that once you start to talk about it, I mean, it's not really something you can talk about in a few minutes. You've got issues with, you know, you capture people at their absolute worst uh, times in their lives, and that's on video. And, and really, who should have access to that? Um, you know, you're inside people's homes who should have access to those type of calls. So really, I believe that uh, these decisions need to be made by elected officials uh, at the legislature to uh, guide the direction of police in these body cameras. It shouldn't be up to uh, your police department um, to make these decisions. <clears throat> Uh, well, obviously, you know, demands for policing um, continue with, with cell phones, you know, 911 calls increase. Uh, people's expectations of policing and what police do are, uh, you know, always growing. Uh, obviously, community relations is critical uh, across the country, and I think Wichita is no different than anywhere else where the focus really needs to be on um, uh, building relationships, uh, ensuring that uh, we are, um, you know, balancing enforcement with, uh, you know, building those relationships. So, you know, to be successful, your officers have to have uh, positive contact with the community. It can't be always in an enforcement situation. I'm going to be focusing on ensuring that we're taking advantage of opportunities when they come forward for our officers to interact positively with the community. And I think the department's, you know, has community policing has been a focus. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a big focus of mine and ensuring that we uh, move along with uh, current trends and best practices in community policing. After so many years in one place, <coughs> is this the right time and situation for you to move? Well, you know, I, I thought John had taken my notes, actually, when he was <laughs> speaking, because really, for me, um, you know, it's almost, uh, I have a fatalistic view, it's almost meant to be everything has fallen into place. Um, you know, when I first read the management study, uh, a lot of those issues on that management study that were identified were things that I've dealt with, and not only that I have dealt with, but that I enjoy working with as a police chief and a police officer. So um, that really drew me in. And then ob obviously spending time in this community, very welcoming people, uh, warm, friendly, and I just, I just get a good feeling about it. Yeah. Um, who will you talk to? What will you say? 
So, uh, yeah, I'm going to work tonight and tomorrow night, and uh, I'm going to hit the shift turnouts and, you know, talk with staff, listen to them, do more listening than talking, but also setting my expectations on what I want to see from officers, you know, that um, so they clearly understand what my expectations are, but as well as listening. And then not only do I want to go on police calls, but I also want to hit uh, community centers and, and uh, places where youth are uh, gathering, youth centers, to have discussions and introduce myself to the community as well. So that's how I'm going to start. Sure. So let's make this the last question. But I, uh, recruiting is something that, that I enjoy uh, and have had success with it back in Minnesota. And I believe that, uh, you know, the opportunities here in Wichita, that it is a large department, the opportunities that exist here, the fact we have three uh, colleges that have criminal justice majors, um, uh, that's an area we're going to focus on. We want to get the best, brightest, best educated people in the door. Uh, to work for this department, and recruiting is going to be a priority uh, for me in this department to ensure we get the absolute best, as well as diverse candidates that, that uh, represent, uh, you know, all neighborhoods in the city. Just to double check, you did say you might go out on a few police calls in the next couple of days, nights. Nice. I, I will be going out on police calls, yep. Have you got your gun and badge yet, Chief? Just got qualified today, and I passed the first time, and, uh, <laughs> yep, went very well, so. Chief, Chief thank you very much. Um, Appreciate many of my colleagues that are here with us today, along with our city manager, Robert Layton. I want to make sure that you all understand, even though Chief Ramsey comes to us with, as I mentioned, some, some um, high marks, some very big accolades, coming from a community that had something like a 94% approval rating. So you can imagine how well uh, he was liked in Duluth. And so we're pretty excited. But I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that, and we're not trying to make this a competition, but I'm going to tell you today, Mr. Hall might have the biggest impact in this community come this next year. So we're just as excited about his experience and what he brings to the table and the changes that he can make. And I'm going to tell you, those are just as exciting as Mr. Ramsey's 94% community rating. So. Thank you both for being here, and if there are any other questions, we'll take those. If not, you go out and enjoy the weather today. Thank you all. <laughs>